What's up? How are you? I'm good. Good. Nice to see you. Finally. Finally. It's been long anticipated. I know, right? hey guys we're back and thank you guys for the continuous support you guys keep watching thank you for the phone call saying call me back those videos it really helps out a lot and thank you for all the suggestions guys um it's been a long time um and as you know i've been transitioning learning something new you know i'm formulating the feed now for hyper guys so come on guys support the feed i try to do my best in providing the best quality feed for you guys out there and i also want to shout out to our goat farmers who keep the sector growing the guys keep continuously putting things together and we're moving so much more at that needle that we need to eventually commercialize this system so guys have a nice vlog to you today a nice interview sit down with a beautiful young lady who i think would express herself well for us to kind of look more deep into what the sector have to offer the challenges and what is it that we can do to grow further I'm Leah and I'm a goat farmer and I'm a female. Hi Leah, how are you? It's all good. We're here. We have life. Well, I'm glad to be here with you. And as you know, I try to go around the country and I try to put farmers on display for one. I like us to share information with the general public so we can get a realistic view of what the goat industry has to offer. And I think because you're a perfect candidate for that. We spoke on the phone many times. Um, you, show, you, you, you shared me your challenges, um, you shared me your goals and your objectives. I just want to share that with the general public. Sure. So my first question for you is, why become a goat farmer? I never intended. Um, it was something that just fell in my lap. And it was in the beginning of COVID and it almost was a blessing. Um, I acquired one goat via a very weird story, if you want, I could tell it. Definitely. All right. So at the time, I had a young baby and I had some baby products selling and someone contacted me and asked me if I would be willing to trade him a curb for a goat. And I kind of said to myself, say, boy, what am I doing with a goat? And then I said, all right, whatever. And I said, absolutely, I'll take the goat. And it was a uh, half Nubian, half native, and a ram, and we named him Max. First goat we ever had. Anyway, we had him over at our other house over there, and my father-in-law kept on saying to me, you think I saw goat race? I can't just tie up goats in the backyard. <laughs> And so then we were like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Because we, we've we never done this before. Okay. And anyway, so we brought him over here and we had him tied up. And it was, it was just him. And that was the beginning. So goat find me, I never find him. So that, that is the beginning of our goat story. Start with one goat. One goat. So I know I see that you expand a lot. How, how was that process? What what inspired you to select some of the animal, animals that you have here? And why build a goat house? Some of the animals that we have here really were initially or, or dream was really to have a lot of pure birds. But after trial and error, we realized that certain of those purebirds weren't those. So my partner started to acquire a lot of, or buy a lot of more native, or bigger body structures, natives that really thrived on our farm. Um, and then we also noticed that in particular, the Nubians didn't do well here. So that's kind of how we ended up with as far as the goats that we have per se. And then as far as the goat house is concerned, I think initially we kind of thought it was a little bit prestigious. You know what I mean? And then after building it and separating it and all of that stuff, it wasn't working for us because we don't have a lot of 
grass and all of these kind of things that would require us to, to be able to separate everybody and keep everybody locked in all the time. So we had to rethink our whole plan after building the goat house. And then even with building it, it's a lot of money. Like people look at that and think that that is, it doesn't look like a mansion, but the labor and the materials just even to build the base is, it's costly. So. Do you think it's a worthwhile investment though? Do you see the benefits of building, building this house? Yeah, I do. But I also think that there are other ways. I think there are other ways and I think that very or too often we as Jamaicans try to like we we'll follow too much of one path of one person that knows and not explore other avenues that could also be good you know but my partner is somebody who does so much research that right now like not to say we would never go this way again but we'll have other ideas as far as building further housing. Okay, that, that, that sounds yeah. good. There's a, there's a big talk in agriculture, all the time talking about gender equality. Um, as a woman in the goat, in goat farming, do you think there's an impact on how the startup was for you? Did you have issues, for example, when purchasing your goats? Do you think you were being treated fairly? Do you think the system provides um, a way for you as a woman to, to have this business start up properly and give you proper guidance? As far as the system is concerned, no. Um, being a woman, obviously there are physical constraints, but I always have a lot of support around me. You know, there are a lot of young men within the community who we employ. My partner is always there every day, 24-7, doing the physical aspect of the work. Um, I think the only fallback or pullback for me really as a female would be social. Um, so socially, and it, it, it's a topic that a lot of people like to speak about um, but socially me as a female as a good farmer is not uh, it's not a thing it's not accepted you know and there's, there's a lot of you know I dare that boy you're wasting your education you you know what I mean you're wasting your time but uh, I don't feel that way and like we're young farmers, we've only been doing this for like what, a year and a half now. And the point that we've gotten to, and I think that's the way that the place is taken care of and what we've done in a year and a half, serves to show me like within another two years where we'll be. So I'm not deterred by either being a female or, or how people feel about things like that. I've chosen to do this, whether as something on the side or something that's a hundred percent. But it goes, it go, definitely goes way beyond female. The operation, how you manage this, and what's the major challenges that you face here? Food, I would say is number one. No, so? I would say food is number one. Uh, and then, Overall, just, I would say, government support. But in the same time, there is so many people farming that it's really difficult to say that, boy, you're going to put the onus on the government. You know what I mean? Like, you have to find your way and do what you're doing, which is what we're trying to do. And all of this stuff that we have built has been entirely on our own. Um, so... And I wouldn't even really say, I mean, start up. We didn't start up to say that we had this big, massive plan of $5 million and we had to find that $5 million. We, we had one goat. And my partner can tell you we had a lick of pen right there over in that little area. 
when it was chain link and they were living in there. How many we had at the time? Like four and then it became maybe like 20. And at that point we were like, all right, we we'll have to figure something out. But we never started as people who had a grandmaster. We just started. The real estate guys go crazy. Yeah. So, dog, I definitely think. But that is a recent issue. It's a re yeah. I, I think that's a major issue we face in Jamaica, definitely. Um, dog predation. But, but still on that same challenge of food and dog predation. Because you send the animals out to graze because you probably don't have the error to grow the food. Yes. Do you have any solution in your mind that you'd no, like to share with us? We've been trying to get grass. We have the area to grow the food, but we just do not have grass okay. and have like know how to grow the grass. Okay. But we have the area as you can see there's a big white area. Mm -hmm. We have more than like four acres. Like four acres of land. Okay. That is all fenced in that no other animal can get into. So 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 you're saying that a part of your solution is to have access to the, the forage that you can plant, so yeah. see the planting material. Yeah. And then the technical support yes. to grow the forages. Yes. It's a just a way how to grow it. A major disconnect between MOA, Grado, and then younger farmers that are out here trying to do it who really don't know. You know what I mean? Like, we, like the truth of the matter is that a lot of the knowledge that we have really comes from him. You know, because he's a man who sits online and watches a lot of stuff. Your program. And Trevor, Trevor Bernard, Bernard all the programs, all those, to Switzerland, try and understand. But we also watch a lot of more international stuff, which I would say to people, gotta watch. Because one of the greatest things that we realized recently is that the massive problem that everybody is facing as a goat farmer is worms. Yeah. And that is because there are only three types of worming products. And, and they haven't changed over the last 50 years. Yes, yes. You know? And so the goats are becoming immune, the worms are becoming immune, and you have to be finding other almost holistic remedies to try and deal with that. Because what we're doing, and I can tell you on our farm, we have goats where we worm and we worm and we worm and they're just not. You know, into, the into go, coming into form, and we we check them, we do blood tests, we do all kind of stuff, and it's just can the body not fight, the body not fight. So if we're supposed to do this all over again from the beginning, what two things would you do differently? Um, I'll be honest. I w in the very beginning, I was given the advice not to start off with purebred animals but of course given my nature i decided that that was not accurate and so we definitely purchased some purer bred animals that either they weren't meant for my environment or good for my environment or because they were more penned animals one sad Start off with mixed, uh, mixed natives, they're hardier, and that, and kind of figure out where you want to go with your farm. Like in the beginning, we want, we were saying we wanted to do, like get to a point where we're doing only pure milk. And I don't really, I wouldn't say that that's not our goal anymore, but right now we've realized that we can go about it another way until we get to that point and uh, yeah, I think there would have been like proper housing yeah like it's the number one key to us raising really like housing is number one and like vaccine. because I wouldn't even classify vaccine because sometimes the goat has died I don't know when it's vaccine yeah. I would have said proper housing is the key. Shelter for goats in yeah. rainy time is key. 
Yeah. Because I would say the main reason for having this housing is because one time we were in the country, we get a call that the boat was dying because it was like in last year, September, the rain was like flooded. Boat is having kids and yeah. boat is dying in the rain. And when I get back, the pen was a mess. Because yeah. after two years, I still learning about and we still lose those like learning the sickness they carry and i think learn about goats is number one key to us goat rearing yeah. I, have, I, have a, I have a kind of segue question um the laborers that you have that support your goat farm do you have any issues with finding persons who you think fit into the operation do you have to train them up to where you want them to be or you think that they naturally came off with that, you know, just an understanding to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do on the, the goat farm today? No, I think you have to train them. It's like, it's hard to find someone that loves goats, like just a goat. Dog. So you have to bring them up to speed and how sensible a goat is. You understand? And you can know when a goat is really crying for help, then mm -hmm. a goat is just crying. Get you. He knows. All right, we'll have goats that come in sometimes and they're hiding. Like they'll, I want to say hiding, they're hitched up on the fence line. And he automatically will say something is not right. Like a child. Yeah. You can know when they're not feeling. And they can't speak, right? So by the goat walking in, you can yeah. say, no, that's not the goat because it, I know. All right, we have a hundred and some goats and I know how all of them operate. And mm -hmm. I can tell if one is missing. Yeah. I could watch every goat come through this gate and I could be like, no, I'm missing, I'm missing. I'd yeah. be like, oh, you know, every but I just evening, know. We look at I each other like, and no, we're like, hey, that goat is not in, that is goat is not in. This one like, child in because we have to let them out. And if one is sick, I could tell you. The if the kid is not moving good, I could tell you. Like, something is wrong. So observation is key. And then yeah. on remedy, like, what I think I could give the goat, mm -hmm. I don't know if sometimes it's right or it's wrong, but it's much of time work for me. Like if they're moving a little bit weak, I say, all right, I need to give them some iron or yeah. give them some cinnamon gel and tongue or get you something to try and boost the energy. We also started using a copper bolus. Right? Copper bolus, and, and I could see a massive difference. Massive difference, a yeah. Massive difference. In the thing that transformed from like what I was watching on the international channel as a fish tail to like coming one. Yeah. And this fish tail, um, this copper was introduced to us by Work it's called on the house livestock yes. and he's in saint mary oh yeah i know them yes yes a, a brother whole set of people yeah, yeah, yeah. brother and sisters yeah yeah, yeah. And they, yeah i got in contact with them seen them online and we got to chatting and i said to him one day like boy we're worming and this is what's happening and he said to me try this and he gave me he literally sent a thing of um, Brand new container of copper bolus down here for me. Never asked for compensation. And subsequently to that, we've developed a relationship with them and they've came here and you know. Is it, um, yeah, man. Nice. Yeah, good so it's, it's, there's a lot of like bad energy, I think, in the older generation of stuff. But I think there's a lot of good energy in the younger generation. And we are definitely building our own little, you know like crew with all younger goat farmers like he has a good version of his in so Kent Farm is. yeah he brought he's the one that gave me the first round and he told yeah. us yeah. like if something's wrong in the goat like 2 a.m. in the morning him up. Carlos we have to trust me <laughs> they call it Kent yeah, Farm man. he will come here 2 a.m. in the morning nice yeah. like he does, he's, he's a good I've goat known him advice. long before goats and then when I got the first goat from him He's just never, he's never let us know. Good advice. So you always tell me people. that just gather females. You know. Females is the key to so, so what I get from this is that you're saying networking between the networking younger generation. Yes. The younger generation. Would help push the sector forward. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. definitely. That I good. think that's definitely, that's key because a lot of younger people are complaining that they're getting shut out. You know? And... I mean, we haven't really experienced it because we don't reach out too much to a lot of people. Yeah. Like, we don't, for instance, like when I checked in with you, like you were great, you know, Paul Sales was great, um, Oral Robinson, great, 
And then as far as the rest is concerned, I Yes, people will tell you about that. You know that, what I mean? That cannot get pregnant. Yeah. A goat that is so old, but at the same time, he's telling that the goat is so young. Because I could tell you, like, up to last year, I went and buy a female goat. Shad no tea. And the goat had no, no tea. tea. And, but like, know. they take my 35,000 yeah. dollars. So easy for a female yeah. goat to know tea. <laughs> no tea, I get you. But you I don't know. Came, it wasn't until I came home. I was gone away at the time, and I got home, and she got sick. And I said to him, the baby, yo, let's look at her teeth. Yeah. She Angel literally no had no teeth. That grandma. Was pretty it's crazy. Grandma. No, she so must have been the, like 15 years old. So I just physically that, yo. You know? You have to just. Yeah. That's the reason why I always hear um, Trevor Bernard say buy younger females or yes. younger yeah. goats. And that's where it naturally goes to. Like, yeah. younger goats, better. Better for you. Yeah. yeah. But enough people want to try and buy the older goat because they're looking for a quicker start. Yes. But the race is not for the swift. We still can't hear what we're saying. Damien Crawford has also have a big him up. Yes. Damien has re also been a really good um, source of information and a source of support. Um, and recently also connecting with the Minister of Agriculture, Floyd Green, and he has also, you know, listened and heard and understands and hopefully we can go forward and make this thing great because there's a lot of opportunity here for yes. the younger generation, not not mine, but the younger youth that are within the community that you can bring work, it can bring opportunity, can bring experience, and that's what we're here to do. And to really have you something know. like this in a vital community like this yes. is so important. I agree. Because yeah. trust me, this farmer feed lots of young youths. And doesn't know yeah. how to get a paycheck for a day, yeah. but they could come here and help a whole goat, yeah. and they could go home with a day's pay. And I to come yeah. and clean a place. If you could even look, there's someone here now working on the farm, like yep. just literally working. I like that. And yeah. just try and just bring like a Community new love, like a new type of work, a new type of job. Like, listen, you don't have to wear a jacket and tie and wear a button from a shirt to make money. Mm -hmm. They're just so simple and easy to just make money. Coming to like this, yeah. it's money is in so much things and I think farm is the way to go. Alright, so right now these are my my two full goats I have on my farm. Nice. I have others graded. Um she came from oral and this is from Paul. Oh, Mr. Sears. Yes, from Paul. He's from my very first ram and his mother is native. So he's here, he's not, you know, he's not fabulous. So he's, he's ready to go into a pot at any moment. Yes. Um, likewise, um, his father would have been a Nubian that I had actually bought from Oral. Oral. And really? his mother is native. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me just give you a kind of breakdown of how, why inside looks here, the, how the way that it looks. So initially when we did this we really had no idea what we were doing so we did really great with lining it out and putting down the, the telephone poles and whatever it is and then what we decided to do for sake of um cost restraints were to use pallets so all the flooring you see in here is now pulled up pallets but initially what had happened was that the first person that we had working on the place wasn't too knowledgeable. So if you notice over there, it kind of looks like a little dippy dippy yes, dippy dippy. Yes. And then over here is a little bit more straight and a little bit better. So um, <clears throat> all of this is just pulled up pallets. And everything was partitioned initially. But you're asking me about what I would tell young farmers. Mm -hmm. When you partition a goat house like this, you have to be able to feed without sending out. Because if you send to graze, when the animals come back in, to separate them when they all come back in is a tedious task when 120 goats come back in every evening. So we kind of just removed all of our separations and kept one for the kids. And we have a, well, one, it rotates. So like pregnant mothers, and then we have one over there where we put as like a creep feeder 
for the kids. Yeah. Um, and then otherwise, we just removed everything, all the partitions, because she's very thin. She's very, very, very sweet. She's a lovely girl. She loves her scratch. Uh, yeah, man. You know, Sean doesn't love when I rub her up because he says, you know, I tame her up too much. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of how we ended up here. So we were kind of in the process of also wanting to remove some of the floorboards because you can see that some of them broke out. So we have pallets coming that we'll remove some and replace and and then eventually we're going to build something right here, another thing over there. Um, but what? I can tell you why this has, has become very important is that recently we had a massive dog attack. And if we didn't have this to run everybody into in the evening, um, we would have, been, would have been in deep problems. We've lost six goats bitten up. Six last week bitten up and they came onto our property it didn't happen outside um three died and one of them who is here she barely yeah she dare and her mother died when she was very young so we bottle fed her and so it's very heartbreaking for us to bottle feed her and bring her to this point only for our dog. For dog's birth, yeah. yeah, yeah. Get you, I get definitely, you. Definitely sucks. But everybody is here and they're looking a little like they want to go out and eat. Yeah, man. Because we've locked them in for Khalil all evening. So as soon as we're off, we let the rest of them out. All right. And everybody will go out and feed. But otherwise, that and then we have you know, just general other things that we can tell young farmers is that there, there are great products out there. Selmanax, Nutrimins, um, Stress Powder. We use the salt blocks. We use um, the, the flow, what do you call it? Free minerals, free choice yes, minerals. Free choice minerals, yes. Um, Hyper in particular, I always go and, and my my vet out there is awesome. I know, I can't remember his name, but he when he sees a scene, he knows I'm talking about him. So like Dr. Harrison. Uh, Kirk Harrison. Yeah, man, Dr. Harrison. Yes, Dr. Kirk. <laughs> um, so I always have a good chat with him, and he's quite an amusing individual. You know, his sense of humor reminds me of my father, so we always have a good chat. But this is my girl, you see how she knows me? Where are you going? Hey. Oh, you're showing off now.